Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina and um, today I'm going to make um, garlic dill pickles. The recipe that I'm using is my grandfather's recipe. He, um, his name is Ernest Kerr. He was from Oklahoma and um, he worked for the, the railroad as cook. Um, during, that was his last career. He was a deputy sheriff in his early, earlier life and, and did a number of different things. He served in the, uh, uh, served in the Navy uh, way back, way back um, the, in the 1920s. I guess it was, it was right after World War I that he was, that he was in the Navy. Um, Anyway, so he always uh, did, uh, he always raised a garden and uh, did canning and did a lot of the cooking when he was at home. Um, and so um, this is, this is the recipe that, uh, that he used for his, for his pickles and they're, they're delicious. Um, these were a good seller for me last year at the farmer's market. So this is one of the uh, cottage foods that I make. Um, and uh, there's a, there's a good demand from them. I had a, uh, a couple of customers last year that bought lots of jars, I mean cases of my pickles uh, because they wanted to have enough to last them a long time and then uh, uh, another person uh, wanted them to give as gifts uh, to, to friends and family so um, they're, uh, they're a really good pickle and they're very easy to make. I, um, and making my brine in an empty vinegar bottle because that way if I have any left over it makes it a lot easier to save. Um, and so the brine is very simple. It, it uses, and I'm doing a small batch here, um, so I'm going to use two cups of white vinegar. And I'll put the recipe uh, down, in the, down in the comment area for you um, so that you can, uh, can get it yourself. Two cups of white vinegar, one and one quarter cups of uh, pickling salt, canning salt. Um, you don't want to substitute um, uh, kosher salt because it doesn't measure well. You don't want to substitute other kinds of salt because the minerals in them will interfere with the, the way the uh, the cucumbers the way that the cucumbers will uh, will process. Water splashed in that one. Okay. So I want one and a one and a quarter cups of salt. Funnel is always a handy thing to have. Just makes it easier to get get things into things. Get liquids and. Uh, Still spilled it everywhere. All right, and now I need 10 cups of, of water. Now I'm able to use just tap water because ours comes out of a well and it has, uh, it does have some some calcium in it, but uh, it's pretty good water. Um, if you have any iron or, or things like that in your in your water, you'll want to use um, store bought water or distilled water. Um, so so just you know play it by ear with your pickles. The the water that you use. Um, can make a big difference in them. Some waters will make them turn out especially good and then other waters can uh, can interfere with how well that they do. So I'm going to get 10 cups of water and put in here. Okay, now I've poured in my 10 cups of water um, and uh, the other nice thing about having uh, Having this in a uh, uh, in a bottle is that I can now I can just put the lid on it and the vinegar the vinegar bottle seal up the lid fits on it really tight and so now I can just shake it. Uh, you don't want to heat this. You just want to use uh, uh, room temperature water and uh, and just uh, shake or, or stir until your salt dissolves. The other nice thing about uh, canning salt is that. It's usually very fine, and so it's usually very quick dissolving. Okay. 
All right, so there's that's my brine. That's all it is, is, is 10 cups of water, 2 cups of white vinegar, and 1 and a half cups of canning salt. Um, now, it, now I'm going to prepare each uh, each jar, and uh, and I'm making a, my first batch. I made um, uh, whole pickles, but I didn't like. You, you can't get that many pickles in the jar um, because they just they they just don't fit in there well in these quart jars. And I don't have uh, uh, a pot big enough to process a half gallon jar, um, so. I'm not going to uh, not going to make those. So what I'm going to do is do what I did last year, which is make pickle spears, and then I'll also do some hamburger chips. And I did the hamburger chips in a with a different recipe um, for my. Uh, uh, but into each jar, I'm going to put two two cloves of garlic peeled, and you want nice size ones. If your garlic cloves are small. You know, add add an extra one. By the way, if my if my hands uh, don't look very clean, it's they're they're spotless. But I've been messing with blackberries, <laughs> and so they stain everything. Um, I made a, a blackberry cobbler for uh, for a church thing uh, yesterday, and uh, oh, it was very tasty. But uh, my goodness, it uh, it sure did stain my hands and. Um, and even cleaning up last night after we had had seconds of it uh, has uh, <laughs> has stained my hands again. So uh, pretty funny there. But you know, with my printing and letterpress, I'm always having to apologize for having <laughs> uh, ink under my nails too. So uh, it's uh, it's always something. So if you wonder why I don't have. Uh, don't get manicures. That's uh, not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons. Is because I'm always do, doing things with my hands, and uh, a manicure would not last any time at all for me. This, this garlic is, is actually pretty easy to peel. Um, I should have uh, I should have asked Paul to do this so that he could uh, show y'all his famous little double bowls trick, <laughs> but, uh, like he did with our gumbo when we made it. But we nearly got these done now. So I remember when our garlic that we got had little tiny cloves and they were very strong. These these big huge cloves. This. I know this isn't what they call elephant garlic now, but this would have looked like elephant garlic compared to the little... When I was growing up, most of the garlic cloves off of the pods were, were small. These, these, would have been, these would have been nice big sized uh, cloves. So, um, but like I said, they were much stronger garlic back then too. So um, that uh, was probably because of the you know, it was probably uh, heirloom varieties that uh, were locally grown. I did get um, uh, lo local local young man Josh uh, Furry gave me some a start of some local heirloom garlic uh, that's only grown here in Blanket, and uh, I raised it and it, it did real good. It kept throughout the winter, and but I, I didn't mess with it because I want to let it, it will actually reseed itself and establish itself and that's what I want it to do. So I put it into two different patches and then I just left it alone and I won't start gathering it till next year. I'm going to treat it kind of like asparagus and um, hopefully get it well enough established that then I can start harvesting it and uh, and using it and, it'll, and still have enough plenty there to multiply. Um, so. I'm going to finish these and then I'll be right back. All right, now I've got my two pods of garlic, I mean two cloves of garlic in each, uh, in each uh, jar. And uh, I'm also going to use um, either one bunch of fresh dill or two teaspoons of uh, dill seed in each, uh, in each jar, in each quart. If you're making pints, you'll just divide that in half. One. 
and this is dill seed, not dill weed. If you have fresh dill, you also will, can add a dill stem uh, to it. Uh, but uh, usually around here, the butterflies will eat up all the dill. Uh, it's the uh, uh, it's a host for one of our host plant for one of our butterflies, and they will just go nuts. They will come for many miles around. I don't know how they know when you get dill growing in your garden, but they surely do, and they they come and and. Uh, rejoice and eat it all down to nubs. Uh, last year I went looking for some fresh and I thought, well, I'll check at the nurseries, you know, maybe they've got some. Um, and uh, uh, I, I got to one and they said, well, the only one we have we can't sell because it's all, it's all. and I said, well, let me see it. And she showed it to me and it, it looked as bad as mine did. There weren't anything left but little, little stubs. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, and then uh, we're going to use uh, uh, two pods of uh, dried red pepper. And I'm using um, uh, uh, chili arbol, uh, A-R-B-O-L, um, which are these long. Uh, but you can use any any hot, you want a hot red pepper uh, for this. And so it doesn't, the pickles aren't hot, but they need that little bit of spice in them. And, and, uh, to keep them from tasting bland. I used uh, uh, our Deborah, the, our market manager, she raises these beautiful herbs and uh, I always try to buy my herbs from her. And uh, last year I was able to use her, her hot peppers in, in, my, uh, in my pickles. I may have used them all up. I don't have any yet this year from her. So, and, uh, and two grape leaves. And I'll put the grape leaves in as I put in my uh, cucumbers. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut off the blossom end of each. I'm going to cut like a, like a, a quarter of an inch off the blossom end of each, uh, each cucumber. That has um, some enzymes in it that will uh, soften the, pic the pickles and, uh, and then I'm just going to cut them into quarters and you know the blossom end is the end that didn't have the stem on it <laughs> and uh, in this particular variety it's, it's a, a lighter color so it makes it a little easier to see Let me go get my grape leaves and I'll come back and show you how I stuff these. All right. All right. I went out and I try to not, not clip my grape leaves until um, immediately before um, I want to use them because um, they'll wilt really easily. Um, so I've, I've, uh, I've clipped them. I've clipped off the stems and I've, and I've rinsed them off. Um, they don't need much rinsing because they're pretty clean, but you want to make sure you get any little uh, any little things off of there and so now I'm just going to begin to fill my jars and alternate uh, with my spears get them down in there and uh, and then I'll put the, the grape leaves look really pretty if they can be kind of spread out a little bit along the sides there. And uh, there we go. Those look really nice when they do that. You can do the same thing with your uh, uh, with your peppers too. Just kind of make them look pretty there. See, I can get so many more cucumbers in the jar when I do the spears. I did a, like I said, I, well, let me show you. I've got a completed jar. I did a, uh, these are the ones that I, I made last week, and I used whole cucumbers, but see, they're floating, 
but the jar was packed as, as tight as I could get it. Um, and uh, this variety, although it's very prolific, I'm very happy with how many cucumbers it's producing because last year I didn't get any of my own cucumbers. I had to use daddy's cucumbers um, to make my pickles with. But um, it, it has a lot of hollow ones. Um, so um, this is a, but you can see how it, how it, they're floating in there. And so the, I don't feel like the customer's getting, you know, their money's worth. So, um, so I'll do these and that way they'll be, uh, uh, they'll be a lot nicer. Um, the garlic, Sometimes the garlic will turn blue. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and it's still uh, usable. In fact, uh, your garlic in these, you can uh, uh, you can use it just like any just like fresh garlic in any recipe. So don't throw your pickle juice, pickle brine right out without pulling those garlic cloves out of there, and uh, uh, because they're very 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 tasty. Um, okay, let's. Uh, go. There's just a nice pepper. I'll we'll just put that, lay that along the side there. There's that one. And let me lay a smaller, smaller grape leaf in there. This is a from a, a wild grapevine that just came up in the in the garden. It blooms every year, but it still has not ever made fruit. Um, I suspect that's because there's not another another vine close enough to it to pollinate it. Um, so um, hopefully we'll have a have another one someday. All right, now there, that's much better. Lots more pickles up there. All right, let's uh, let cut up another one and see if I can't. Uh, get a few more chunks in there. Um, on the top there. I know that doesn't look as attractive, but it's it's a uh, it's good for the like I said it's good for the customer that way the customer gets their gets their money's worth when the uh, when the jar is, uh, is nicely filled. Because these aren't cheap. I, I mean, I sell mine for um, uh, um, for eight dollars uh, a quart, um, and uh, and some folks uh, sell theirs for even more. Um, so you're not getting a, a, a cheap product, but what you are getting is um, an an organically grown uh, product where um, and a locally grown. And one that's uh, processed without any any extra junk added to it, um, nothing artificial, um, and uh, and they just taste fabulous. You know, there's a flavor to these that you're not going to get from any other uh, from any uh, store-bought pickle. And uh, now in in there we go. All right, so let's do let's do one more jar, and then I'll uh, all right, see there how my my pepper's standing up. That's just perfect. And I'll just keep adding my my cucumber spears. Grape leaf. There we go. Lay the spear on top of that. It doesn't matter. I just do that to make it look attractive, but it doesn't um, doesn't have to doesn't have to look good. The, the reason you put the grape leaf in is um, the, the the there's a substance in the grape leaves. Some resources say it's uh, simply tannins, but I don't think it's quite as simple as that. I suspect that there's more to it. Um, but you can use grape leaves, you can use um, oak leaves. Um, there are substances in them that will help keep the pickles from uh, from being soft. It makes a nice, cri much more crisp product. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Now then, that one in half. 
get all of those down in there. And there we go. Now, I'm going to uh, just pour my brine over these. Shake it up. Well, I'll make it, make sure it's, it's well done. You want to completely cover all of your cucumbers. them sticking out of that run. Okay. Now then. Just my little pokey thing here. You can use a, um, can use a skewer. You can use a, um, this is saw, this is not uh, sharp on the edge. It's not going to scratch the inside of this. This is uh, chopsticks work real good too. We get all that, uh, all those air bubbles out if you've got any in there. A lot of them will come out when we process, but just to be sure. And now let me, where's my lids? There's my lids. Now then, put my lids on nice and tight, and then um, I will uh, set these aside, and when I'm ready, I'm going to process them. I'll be back when I get the rest of my jars full. Okay, I'm back. Now then, what I'm doing at this stage, let me back around here. Whoops, let me turn this around so I can see. At least sure I'm showing you things. Okay. Um, one of the things that I'm doing as I filled my jars is I'm using my... Uh, I'm using using my scale. Um, I've got it set. What I do is I set the the jar on the scale before I turn it on, and that zeroes it out with the weight of the jar. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I have one and a quarter pounds of cucumbers in each jar, and then after I fill the uh, add the brine, I'll have a, the jar weight uh, or the weight of the contents will be over two pounds. But I want one and a quarter pounds of cucumbers. Um, in each jar and that's so I've got one one pound um, four and a half ounces here and so um, 16 ounces is pounds so four ounces is tw is 25 percent of that um, so I've got I've got all my and so that's a real easy way to be sure that you're getting uh, what you need in there you know sometimes I can get a little more this one's got uh, five ounces so I got an extra ounce into that one but I, but I want to be sure that I have at least a minimum amount so that customers don't feel like they're, you know, if, if I'm asked, uh, I know. I don't, I don't sell things by weight because I don't have certified scales. So we're not allowed to sell even fresh produce by weight uh, without certified scales. Um, but at least that way, I kind of uh, have a sense and with customers, if they take it home and put it on their kitchen scale, they will, they will understand and we, I will understand, we'll have the same, uh, same understanding of that. All right, now then, I've got these all filled. I've got my water heating in my, uh, in my stock pot. And um, I'm going to uh, add these. Now I'm going to process these using um, the low temperature pasteurization um, as, uh, uh, as described by the National Center for Home Food Preservation on their website and in, in their book. What you do is, and you can, uh, you can use it for uh, these pickle recipes, um, there are, you can't use it for everything, but this particular pickle recipe I can process through low, low temperature pasteurization. What this does is it helps keep the pickles crisp and still be sanitary enough to sell. Um, to do that, I'm going to bring my water to 180 degrees. I'm going to, or I'm going to put my jars in, then bring the water to 180 degrees, which is not boiling, not simmering. Um, and um, then I'm going to keep it at between 180 and 185 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes before I remove my jars. So um, right now I'm going to uh, test my water temperature and uh, here we go. 
I broke my candy thermometer, so I'm having to use our uh, our little meat thermometer. Um, <laughs> you get the temperature up to about you know uh, 120, 130 before you put your jars in. It'll 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 won't take near as long to uh, to get it in there. Okay. All right. It's up to 180 now. So I'm going to add my jars. I've turned my turn my fire down. Turn it off until I get them in, and then I'll turn it back on and uh, watch it real closely. Um, checking my temperature real constantly until uh, until it's uh, uh, come back up. All right, I am uh, processing these in my stock pot, and uh, what I've done to make it uh, possible to keep a simple track of the of it is I'm just using my meat thermometer, and I'm tying it. Tying it on the edge so I won't lose it down in there. And then I'm just dropping it down to lay on the, on the jars there. I don't want it to don't want it to touch the side. There we go. I don't want it to touch the side of the uh, of the pot. I want it to be here in the center so that it won't uh, pick up the, the heat from the jar itself. And now I'm going to watch for it to come up to all right, where is it now? Let me see. All right. All right, it's at 170 right now. It's still climbing. So I'm going to turn the fire on on low. Eventually, um, it'll... Uh, You'll you'll hit on exactly the right you know place to keep your fire to uh, to keep it at the right temperature. But the first time that you do this, you need to watch it like a hawk. You almost just need to stand here next to it. It seems like a long time to do that for 30 minutes, but you need to keep it within that five degree uh, temperature range. And and I can't start my timing until it goes back up to the 180. Um, so I'm going to uh, I want to bring it up. Seems like last time I had it at about right there, at about not quite not quite medium, and it uh, it brought it up pretty nicely. Um, right now it's at 170, so it only has 10 degrees to go, but it's got to heat all of the contents of that uh, that's in all four jars. Um, this is a this stock pot works great for this. Um, I can process four quarts in it. Um, and since I have a, a smooth top stove, that means I don't have my big canner. It takes so long for my big canner to uh, uh, to heat up, you know, because the burners are small. And um, and it, this electric, it, they come on and off, so I don't have this constant heat under there. So this works much, much better. It doesn't let me process as much, but um, it because it comes up faster, I think it evens out probably in, in the long run. All right, I will be back um, and show you when we uh, get done with this and we're ready to, ready to pull them out. Just wanted to show you real quick. They've, they've been in here about 15 minutes. I've been doing a good job of keeping my, my temperature steady at about, uh, uh, about 180 to 80. 181, 182 degrees, um, and uh, the bubbles that you see rising are just the air bubbles leaving the, the pickle jars as they as they process and as the um, as the pressure forces the air out. Yeah, see how that stopped? So see, there's no simmering happening. There's barely any steam. There's just a small amount of steam um, coming up. So it's a, uh, and you can see that, see the temperature gauge there. Um, it's about, uh, yeah, about, about, about 180 to 183.
um, so we don't want to get it any higher than that. Um, 185 is the top top of the range. You don't want to go above that at all. So we want to stay uh, within that within that range. But it's doing real good, and I haven't had to adjust the temperature on the stove to keep it at that. I, I got it set uh, on my stove just just right, and it worked real good. So so it's uh, it's doing well, and. Um, if you've ever processed pickles and uh, been really disappointed with how soggy they were, um, this is your this is your secret, and it's a lot of trouble, but it's definitely worth the effort for nice, crispy, crunchy deals. All right, be back when they're done. All right, time is up, and now we see. I pulled them out and put the other uh, the other ones in, and uh, now we have these nice. Uh, processed pickles with low temperature pasteurization. They will start popping after a while. It'll take them a little bit longer to pop than the ones that you do in the boiling water bath because they, uh, not being as hot, they actually cool down a little bit faster too. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, if you like it, uh, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.